So welcome back to Eileen the Mastiff and in today's video we want to give you an update uh, based on something that a lot of people have been asking and that's about how her obedience training is going. We focus a lot on kind of manners and socialization and sometimes it looks like we might not be talking about obedience that much so you guys have been asking kind of how we've been going so we thought we'd jump on and explain and show you some clips of the training that we've been doing with her so yes. I'll pass that over to you. So the clips that we're showing are actually Will doing an obedience drill with her mm -hmm. um, just because they been filming a video for the training channel today so that's why it looks like will's doing all the training but actually it, it has been mostly me um so yeah we're just doing like a basic obedience drill at the moment so i'm working on sit a little bit of stay um but kind of like staying near her mm -hmm. and then moving slightly back and then um a little bit of down but we're still working on that so a sit is pretty much nailed now um, and then yeah for the first time as well today we did a bit of recall didn't we yeah so i think i'll jump in here from kind of more of a technical point of view and waffle for a couple of minutes about the importance <laughs> of understanding realistic expectations from your dog based on its breed and its individual characteristics now that doesn't mean that you should allow for like using it as an excuse to not train your dog it just means about understanding what their limitations are so the last time you saw me working with a young puppy would have been back in uh, over a year ago now when i was working with mabel our connie corso and people were astonished about how quickly i was able to train her to some quite good levels of obedience mm -hmm. but that was because of her breed. Connie Corsos are a joy to train working with joe's puppy lab labrador puppy and it's a working line lab will train for 20 minutes at nine weeks old and I'll have to cut the session short. With Eileen, 30 seconds is a win. If you can get it to a minute or more, we're starting to get to those yeah, realms. Yeah, now we're like adding in extra things. Like it's not just sit, yeah. it's not just one command. Now we're adding in extra things. Yeah, a minute, maybe two minutes is sort of her limit. And you can, it's like a switch goes off mm -hmm. and she's like, oh, I'm I'm done now. Like you'll do her down, and, and she then just won't get she'll up. stay down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. And you have to. So that's not a problem with Eileen. Um, that would be us setting her. If you were trying, if I was comparing Eileen to Riley, Joe's Labrador, you would say that Eileen is useless compared to Riley. If you were comparing it like that, but that's not the case whatsoever. They're just completely different dogs and different breeds purchased for different reasons what we want from Eileen isn't what Joe wants from Riley or what I wanted from Sully when I got my work in Labrador so again that's the importance of breed selection uh, and not just breed selection but then breed research to understand what those limitations are an, an amazing breeder will help you with that and explain kind of the process um, and for us for what we want Eileen for is just to be a fantastic loving family companion that is low energy that is chill um, and is just a joy to be with now it would be easy and people make this mistake of using that as an excuse to not train dogs like that that are stereotypically much harder to train mm -hmm. what i say is that every dog regardless of breed should have mastered basic obedience what that allows you to do is to keep them safe and under control in all environments and circumstances and makes them a joy to be with to achieve that it's to be able to sit and get them to stay somewhere that's excellent for manners if they're sitting and staying and waiting patiently, but it's also really good for safety because you can get them to stay somewhere while you go and do something or if there's something happening that you need them, just, just stay there. It's really important. Walking nicely to heel for me is non-negotiable, especially for a giant breed, even for smaller breeds because a dog that doesn't walk nicely is then a miserable experience to walk, which makes it a chore, which means people don't exercise their dogs enough and exercise is the most important thing. So if a dog walks nicely to heel, it turns it into a joy, which then means you're more naturally going to get out and walk with your dog more, give them more exercise, they're happier, and then to come to you when you ask them to. So if Eileen can sit, stay, walk to heel and recall for us she will be a perfect canine companion and that's what we're working on so rachel's been smashing sit stuff she, she's there with that now brilliant stay is incredible and you've been using that with food so don't downplay it when you say you've oh, been yeah, just started I didn't, it i didn't think about it like that yeah yeah so i've only just you see that as a manners thing but what you do you're using your obedience to inform incredible mm -hmm. manners so you use the sit and stay that you did i didn't do a single bit of that 
to then instill incredible manners uh, around meal times and to give her incredible impulse control, which down the line will be incredible for when she sees that thing that she wants to go and chase because you've instilled incredible impulse control early on. When you ask her to sit and stay, she'll do that and that might be the difference between her getting run over or not. So again, it's like you, you might think it's small now, but the compounding effect, call it like micro and macro. The micro, mm -hmm. you're downplaying it. So yeah, I've been doing a little bit, but the macro of that, very well may save her life in the future. I think as well, it's like I only sometimes associate the obedience training with what I do when I like formally yeah, formal do obedience the training. routine. And it's the same as um, I know in the puppy course, like you talk about um, like going around the dog and like feeling their paws and their mm. teeth and stuff like that. And I don't necessarily do that in the formal obedience session. And then I think to myself, Oh, you haven't. You've not done that. You've not been doing what you're mm. meant to be doing. But we do do it mm. all the time. Like if she's sitting with me on the sofa, then I'll play with her feet. Or mm. um, yeah. I think sometimes I forget what else. Absolutely. What else we do? Yeah. And and for me, and it's something that again I talk about when people are like, "Why don't you do more like obedient stuff?" Show. Me. I'm like, I can, but ultimately that's the easy part. And there's a million people on YouTube doing that. But why is it that so many dogs are still going to shelters and being put down? It's because that formal obedience or trick training is like a percent at max of your life and relationship with the dog. The other 99% is manners, socialization, free shaping behaviors like that. And most importantly, leadership and having them looking up to you for guidance and direction. So I would rather have a dog that has that 99% nailed with no obedience because if that dog has all that nail obedience will happen instantly. It'll just be easy to do than a dog that can do all the tricks in the world, but is badly socialized, bad manners, and has no leadership. They're the dogs that come to me. You shock at the amount of people that come to me, like my dog is reactive, it's aggressive, it's killed another dog, it's bit my child, resource guarding, but it can do sit down and roll over and give poor, but I'm considering having this dog put down that that's what I see every day, which is what informs my philosophy around those things being much more important. So yes, we're doing obedience, I'm waffling. But back to Eileen's 12 week obedience. I was just about to get there. I was going full circle, it was lovely. I'd nearly wrapped up a good waffle. session. I know, but session. when we started this video, we said five minute video, and I, how long have you been going? Nine minutes, it's like... Just, it's, it's only nine minutes. That's a minor waffle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off now. <laughs> Go on, what was you going to say? I've lost it. Right, what I was going to say is back to Eileen's routine. Mm -hmm. So we are starting with sit. But the sit informs all the other stuff. So before we do anything, she sits first. So if you're doing down, she'll sit and then go down. Mm -hmm. That kind of helps with the luring as well. I think what was nice that they'll probably be able to see in the, some of the B-roll, you can cut it in mm -hmm. magically, is that she was like just following your lure in general mm -hmm. when you were sort of like waving the treat around yeah. as you do your hand movements. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really good. So yeah, we do a bit of sit. A couple of times of stay, a couple of times of down, and that is the session. The recall work, we we managed quite a few back and forth. So we got ten reps of partner Did recall. We? Yeah, so we were in the office. You'll see it in the video going back and forward. I think we managed nine or ten reps. Yeah. Um, and from then, it's just about increasing distance and distraction. And again, it will take months with Eileen, but we'll get there. Yeah, mm. and also like. It's not. It's also not necessarily the same as well because if you take like Riley for example, she will probably go further away from Joe mm. than Eileen ever will from us, yeah. because of energy, because of wanting to be close to us. That's mm. like a massive trait, yeah. isn't it? Mm. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. And then heels the other one that you've missed out. So you've been starting to you, what you were saying about using that luring technique kind of yeah. luring into the heel position. Again, if those of you following the puppy course, you'll know all about this. But then marking that behavior of being on the left-hand side, you've started to add a lead to it. And then the one thing that I will um, kind of probably lead is when we start yeah. going for walks outside, like heel walking is my, if there was one thing I was to say is my speciality, it's getting large, powerful breeds to walk to heel. Yeah. So I probably so will I tune that up. I is 11 and a half weeks. So I think we're probably gonna spend the rest of this week working on luring them to the heel position adding the lead to it and then next week we'll probably start with maybe a little bit of walking yeah and i'll probably take that outside and start to dial that up and 
um, maybe yeah. throw some advanced techniques I also think in. next week as well that I was thinking about taking the obedience routine outside. Yeah. Like sit down, out, but doing mm. it like maybe just in the garden. Yeah. Um, although she is a bit funny about surfaces. Yeah, the puppies are saying it's really common, um, which is why you have to drill it in different environments. Okay. It's all well and good getting a perfect sit and stay on your carpet but when you need them to do it by a road for their safety and it's yeah. fr uh, snows on the floor or it's wet and they don't do it that's why okay. building up those different environments so there you go. that's what you'll see next week we'll be uh, we'll be outside in the rain <laughs> uh so is that our 12 week I think training so. update you've had a bit of waffle i haven't waffled all day so that was enjoyable I know. No, I've waffled quite a few you times have today. I've had a few I was meetings. just thinking you've done mm. meetings yeah. and you filmed some videos and waffled. So Yeah, fair play. Sorry everyone. On that note. Yeah. See you in the next video for some more waffling. More waffles.